To start off our day, we had a solidarity march to reflect on the works of Dr. King and to uh, fellowship and potentially plan what our campus can do better when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Devante Dews is a member of the Martin Luther King Jr. Committee and a co-president of the Black Student Union at Eastern Mennonite University. He was among 50 students participating in the Solidarity March. Dews admits he was shocked when the marchers walked inside the auditorium and found a large crowd of people waiting. I was beyond speechless. The first thing I can do was just stop and say, to God be the glory. Because the previous year there was maybe not even half of the people there. Um, we walked into an empty chapel just about last year. The only people there were the people that marched with us. So to see people waiting on us anxiously for my march was just unbelievable. Dues also took part in a litany about peace. And everyone is waiting for me to fail. All I want in life is to be successful and to be a role model to the younger generation. So what now? Do I assimilate and let my voice be oppressed? Do I change in order to fit into white America? We have inner peace. It helps to keep us calm, make us feel so safe whenever we feel harm. It is there inside, there to call upon when we need it the most to help us carry on. We met well. We thought we were doing God's will. We did not see the face of God in each other. The climax of the MLK celebration service was a guest speaker, Reverend Sharon Risher of Charleston, South Carolina. Risher's message was entitled, Stay Woke, Remain Awake Through a Great Revolution. Dr. King's use of nonviolence in the face of violence. Because you see, after he got into the movement in the civil rights era, he was faced with violence every day. If you know a little bit about his history, his house was bombed. His family was put in harm's way because of what he felt God had called him to do. He had to even go buy a gun to protect his family. Not that he wanted to, but because he had to. This is the kind of life that he led because of the call God had given him in his life. Risher knows the dangers of gun violence firsthand. On June 17, 2015, a 21-year-old white young man decided that that would be the day that he would go into Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church and shoot and kill as many people as he could. He did months of research and preparation, including several road trips back and forth from Columbia, South Carolina to Charleston. He scattered out the church. He plotted his escape route. And on that day, my family members, among others, were attending their regular Wednesday night Bible study. They gathered as usual. Earlier in the evening, the church was packed full of people because the district was having their regular general conference meeting. Because the meeting had run into overtime, it was a discussion about whether to hold the Bible study, whether to cancel it or not. They decided they were not going to cancel the Bible study. The faithful stayed while so many others left. Her relatives were among nine people who were gunned down by a white supremacist, Dylan Roof. They stayed and they welcomed this young man into the church and sat him near the pastor. Pastor Clementa Pinckney, who was also a member of the South Carolina Senate, led the Bible study and was killed during the massacre. Because we believe all lives in South Carolina matter. Richard told the large crowd that Charleston Emanuel AME Church shooting should never be forgotten. After about an hour of studying the, Mark, the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, they gathered in a circle in prayer for dismissal. While holding hands and praying with their heads bowed and their eyes closed, their lives came to a faithful end. <clears throat> He slaughtered them while they ran and hid under tables. This young man robbed my family and the eight others of their loved ones. Five people survived. Five people have 
to live with for the rest of their lives with the images and the heartaches in their hearts every day. I continue to say, to say their names because my mission in life is helping other people know that hate won't win. I continue to call their names because they gave their lives for a higher purpose and always should be remembered. They are my mother, Mrs. Ethel Lee Lance, my cousins, Mrs. Susie Jackson and Tawanza Sanders, my childhood friend, Myra Thompson, the pastor of the church, Reverend Clemente Pinckney, Reverend Daniel Simmons, Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, Mrs. Cynthia Hurd, Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor. I pray that whenever you hear their names, you will feel empowered to, in to help invoke change. I question dues about the numerous shootings in the U.S. of unarmed young black men. A sense of frustration, um, a sense of questioning of, did they assimilate like we're taught to as, as kids? Should they, did they have their pants below their waistline where they're speaking in, in slur? And then it's like, well, does that mean that we, we should be shot down because of that? Like because of our presence, does that mean that we're a threat? How do we, what is the correct presence or representation of ourselves do we need to be known as non-threatening? The peace litany that he and his classmates performed is a clear indication of the potential of great leadership for the future. I definitely think this is just the beginning. There's a lot of work to be done. But in order for that work to be done, it cannot be done by one person. We must come together as a community to have the dream that Dr. King has for us. Um, this is only the beginning, and we will do better every year as we learn more. Every day of our lives, every day we wake up, we have a challenge of doing something that will better ourselves, and that will better the lives of people who don't look like us, who don't talk like us, to live in the same neighborhoods that we live. Let us all come together in peace. Let us stand together as one. And let Dr. King's dream come to pass and forever be in our hearts. Amen. Amen. In Harrisonburg, Elaine Rackley for Breaking Through News.